Hi everyone, so great to see you on this Tuesday afternoon. I wanted to stop by and share a little tutorial for you, which I think will be an adorable embellishment for your journal or for tags or even for a mixed media piece that you might be doing. I picked out some things that we could possibly use in our um, little um, mixed media or, or crafting journey today. I picked out, the first thing I want to show you is, of course, um, this beautiful paper pad that I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, the price, the original price $6.99, but I got it 40% off. And honestly, I would pay regular price for this because the papers in here are absolutely beautiful and you get four of each design. So if you're looking for something tropical, something more um, vintage, something um, springy, you know, this has everything in it. It has some really beautiful designs and the paper, it's not double-sided, but it's textured, which I am all about texture. And I love the rose patterns. These that have the black on them are just absolutely gorgeous. And for me, this size paper is perfect. Um, there's little waste then, although most of us who do mixed media or even any type of collaging in our journals, we usually keep our off cuts anyway. And I would encourage you to do that because you never know when you will find in your stash just the perfect little piece to go with the project that you are doing for the day. So what I did um, to start out is I chose some paper and the paper that I um, wanted to use was this one. And I think it's really pretty. It has um, a little bit of pink in it and can go with pretty much any color scheme that you would like to use. So I found a piece of um, this is, I'm not sure, I'm thinking muslin, but it is a little bit thicker than muslin, so it may be, um, like dish, like a, a dishcloth type material, but at any rate, I think the color was perfect to make, um, the banners with, so I tore some strips and then I'll show you some of the things that <clears throat> I got out of my stash that we could work with. So um, I am going with a purple theme here. Um, there are some pink pieces that I put in too, but we have some purple washi tape, which is really pretty. And that is a set I got from Timu. Um, I found these variegated paper roses that I thought were pretty. We might use those. I also pulled out some of my feed sack washi tape that I had made because it has some purple floral on it. And then just some little trims in different shades of purple, some seam binding. This is a wider piece of lace. So those were the fabric, or I'm sorry, the ribbons I found. This is another one that I had used for something else. Um, and it has little purple beads in the middle and it is, it is um, with the beads, I just sewed them right on to the back of the the lavender colored ribbon. So we may use some of this. And then I pulled out some of these little pearl stick-ons. 
So we'll see if we add any of those. Um, I do have a needle with thread because I'm going to use some buttons. Um, so the buttons are really fun to use on your projects. And I have a couple, um, here's two flat backs and here's um, a couple felt flowers that I have as well. But, um, and another flat back there. I love buttons. I could spend hours going through unsearched buttons and trying to find my favorite kind. Um, purple is kind of one of my favorite colors. However, um, I don't find that I wear it as much. Just it's a visually pleasing color to me. So um, I picked out all kinds of little purple buttons and some things that were on the mauve or the pink side. Um, and I I'm going to keep these here to see what I'm going to use in my project. I also found these three little metal tags and they can be sewn on as well or with an eyelet they can hang. Um, so we're gonna just try a couple different things, but I wanted to show you um, just the beauty of um, glass buttons. So here is a set that I have that's in kind of a periwinkle color. They are so cute. They have like a built-in shank on the bottom, so it's not protruding too much. Whoopsie. This one is a darker purple, and it has, you know, you see some of the etching and the design on them. Those are two of my favorite ones. And then this one right here that looks like a flower is also glass. I love glass buttons. I love the clear ones and I love the mother of pearl buttons. I think they are so beautiful. And a lot of us that do um, a vintage romantic style um, often like the look of the older um, bone or mother of pearl buttons. And I do have a huge, huge button stash. Um, I have some of it still in storage, so I can't get everything out. But um, I just wanted to show you these beauties because they're some of my treasures that I keep. Um, but they were here and they were in the same color scheme. So I really, um, want to see what we can do with some of these things. I cut some hearts out of some darker purple. I'm not a hundred percent convinced of this color. Um, I do have some handmade paper that's in kind of a lilac mauve -y look. So we may do some collaging. And then I also um, found this fabric, which is a paisley. And because of its lighter color, it may look better on the project that we're doing today. So you can make your banners all kinds of sizes. So here's one that is the triangle side. And um, I don't know if you can see this, but I used an old cookbook for the background paper. I picked up this Mexican cookbook at the thrift store because I thought my husband would enjoy reading some of the recipes, but it was comical because it was supposed to be authentic Mexican cuisine, but they were suggesting using some of the traditional items that you find in American kitchens, like cream of mushroom soup and um, things like that. And 
I don't know about you, but I've never heard of a Mexican dish with cream of mushroom soup. So, needless to say, my book um, turned into um, a book that I cut up and did some tea staining with, and um, it's going to be used for that purpose. Um, because we don't use mushroom soup in our Mexican dishes, authentic Mexican dishes. So, <coughs> pardon me. This is one style that you can make, which is just the upside down triangle. You can also use the kind that look more like a flag with the two points on it. So I have um, those templates in the large size, and then I have some of the templates in um, a uh, smaller size. Where'd that other one go? Right here. So these are made out of cardboard, so they'll last but here's a smaller template. And the reason why I like this design, I actually, here we have some brown pages that I just use some heavy cardstock for, which are all triangular. But when I went to um, cut the ones that I want to use for our banner today, I thought this shape looked kind of interesting. So I cut out that shape to go with the more um, banner style shape. And I think that looks really nice together. Now I would probably on this one um, add one more like this. And that way, um, it looks to me um, more even with the, the odd number. So, this is the design for one of the banners we're going to make. And then this is going to be a different one that we're going to make. So, I went ahead and tore down my um, muslin strips and I basically chose, we'll just use this paper since it's scrap, but I basically um, glued these down so that they would have a double thickness and then cut them out, okay? So with this paper, it goes, upwards like this and I was thinking you know since you do get three pages each you could position this so you get more of the rows in the pink rows into your design you know do th this however you like or feel comfortable but here are the ones that I covered I'm going to set these templates out of the way so we can see what our um, what goodies we're going to put on them. And I don't know if you guys keep a, um, I keep a bead box with the little sections in it. And I save little bits of things that I think that I can use in my project. So I save buttons, I save keys, I save um, little pieces of jewelry, all kinds of interesting things that we can add to our design to make it more um, exciting. So here are the ones that I have already cut out and I'm going to work on collaging. I did use my tea stain dye from Tim Holtz 
to um, ink the edges. Tea stain is my favorite because it's less, it just gives it a subtle look. If you use the walnut stain or some of the other colors, it seems like um, the other brown colors, I think there's an aged photo maybe, that seems to be a little bit darker, but the tea stain works out really nice. And you can just go ahead and apply these right down onto your fabric like this. Make sure that whatever ribbon you decide to use, you leave yourself a little bit of a tail because if you, that way you'll have um, the ability to hang it maybe drooping down a little bit more or just straight across the top or however you want to do it. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to move my fabric down so that I have more of a even tail on each side. And I really like how this material um, tore when I tore it. It gives it a really nice rustic look. And you could even go over this with a little bit of the tea stain if you want to and give it a little bit of a darker look. I wouldn't, I'm not gonna put too much on it. I'm just going to make it look a little more um, grungy so that it will mix in with our tags. So I have like a huge pile of, over here of things that we could use. Um, we could leave these certainly um, plain and this would be absolutely beautiful or we could um, add some little pieces of washi tape, some buttons, um, some uh, book pages, anything that you want to bring out um, a more collaged look. So I have right here a couple of book pages and I think that the best way to do this is to work in just tiny little, tiny little sections because the, the banner itself is not that big. Let me get my gel medium. I have some matte gel from Liquitex. This stuff is so great. Excuse my bottle, it looks really cruddy. Let me see if I can find a brush that's not... I was painting today and got... Um, oh my, that one fell apart. I was painting today and got some um, gesso all over everything, so no matter. Okay, so I'm going to start with this little guy and I'm just going to put a little bit of gel medium right here and then I'm going to apply this piece of book paper just like this and I'm going to tear that off so I don't want a whole lot of this book paper showing because I don't want to cover up too much of the design. So I'm just going to go with that little bit. And then um, put a, a couple more pieces just in some random areas to kind of um, bring everything all together. And you can go vertically or you can go horizontally, um, whichever way you 
feel looks good for you. Um, there was an artist that I was watching um, a little bit earlier today about, and she was talking about collaging and how collaging doesn't really take talent and we shouldn't really feel um, nervous about collaging because um, it's just, you know, a way for you to add layers and upon layers and, you know, use your imagination to um, come up with something that looks visually pleasing and um, and the background sometimes we end up um, washing a lot of it out with gesso so she was saying that uh, uh, some people would say that just that collage art is like getting dressed in the morning and um you know we don't need somebody to come and tell us how to get dressed every morning but i don't know about you i don't know if that was the analogy that i could relate to because um i wish i had someone who could come and do my wardrobe and pick out my clothes for me because I'm not, I mean, I know what, I'm not going to wear um, stripes with flowers or plaid or something like that, but um, I'm not really somebody who is much of a fashion conscious person. I just wear whatever I have. And a lot of my things that I do have have been around for a long time. So I'm not sure about that analogy. But at any rate, so you can see here on these first two, two pieces, I just went ahead and added some, <clears throat> some book pages. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, for... Um, this particular project, I wouldn't go overboard with the amount of um, script you use because you want to make sure you can still see the design. So I think just three little pieces. I usually try to work in odd numbers when I'm doing collage. So I think those three little pieces look really nice. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to add something to it that is um, three-dimensional. So I'm going to look at these little buttons here that are kind of square because I think the big ones, oops, there's a flower. Okay, that would look really nice, but we need to have a little strip of purple in there somewhere, I think, or something behind it. So, I'm going to bring out, um, where it, I have some bags with some things in it that I tried to store. I'm wondering if I should use, okay, I'm going to use, um, pull out a piece, a uh, tea stain doily. Okay. And we're going to see just by tearing a little tiny piece of the lace part and see how this will look at the top. So we're going to put this right here at the top 
and I think I'm going to put it this way. This is another thing about gel medium. You know, when you when you try to apply things that are um, like this that have little holes or designs in it and you're afraid you're going to get the glue that's going to squish through the side, you know, that definitely, this is definitely a way to prevent that from happening because the gel medium just goes over and seals it very, very nicely. So I'm going to cut this off here. And I think that looks really nice. And then I am going to find... I'm wondering how this will look up here. If we would use that to attach it. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use these buttons after I put the doily on the pieces to actually attach the um, the little flag to the strip of fabric. So let me get a little piece of this in here. Doesn't have to be big, just enough to let us know that we used it. And I think before I put the button on, I'm gonna do one other thing. Sorry about that. So there we are. And this is how we're gonna decorate each one of these. But for time's sake, I'm gonna show you just the two at a time. And then I'm going to take, um, let me see. I'm gonna take this script stamp and I am going to use some black stays on ink. Now this script might be a tiny bit big, but we're just, oh, I don't want purple. I wanted my black one, even though we're doing purple today. Where is my black one over here? Okay. So what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to lay these up here. Just want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, if you do buy stays on ink, don't throw this plastic away or your um, ink pad will dry out. So I'm just going to use my finger to um, <clears throat> pick up just a little bit of ink and then I'm gonna put it down over top of the banner, just right like that, okay? So I'm just gonna use the little side and I don't want to get too much on there because I don't want it to look too... Um, I still want to make sure I can see some of the design. So there we go. We have those two that have their, um, their pieces on it that we're going to use. So let me lay this over here. <clears throat> and now I am going to... Try not to stab myself. And I'm going to go up through the middle. And I think I'm going to um, just sew this on and not, um, and not use the, uh, <clears throat> not sew it to the banner right now because I think it'll be a little bit tedious. So I'm just going to take a little piece of washi tape here and cover over the end of the string. And then we'll take this button and 
we will add it right here to the middle. This one I think, which is okay, it's going to be off to the side a little bit, which is fine. This, when you're doing um, things organically, they sometimes turn out and look better than when you're trying to be particularly straight with something. So you can also, if you don't want to um, sew, you could also glue these down or even glue them down before you sew. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but our weather has been so crazy that it seems like one day I have a cough and the next day I don't know what's going on. So I'm trying my best to, there we go, sew that in so it I don't get a get poked in the finger. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take that button and put it on right there and it's pretty secure. So I'm going to cut the tail of the ribbon and I'm just going to make sure that the washi tape covers up that end so that it doesn't come undone okay there we go so that's cute right there just a simple little um, button embellishment to it and then we will take the beacon glue and we'll put it on the back here. I'm just going to put it on the top edge and then I'm going to lay it down right here. Now I want to be able to see the frayed part of the banner. So I'm going to lay it underneath that frayed part. And this glue will also, from the back, help the button to stay in position. So let me go ahead and put this one in. Now, because this is a little bigger banner, I'm going to go with a larger square button. And I'm going to put it right here. Now, one of the things that you will find when you are trying to sew through fabric, like, I'm sorry, paper like this, is that if you do <clears throat> cover up your ends with the washi tape, it's hard to find the hole again that you need to go through for the... the eye of the button. So this is this one's wanting to give me some trouble here. Give me a second to get this pulled through. Okay. I want to see. Make sure that's flush with the top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this through and see if, so you're seeing me do all my boo-boos today, which is okay. So. 
but this is a fun little project um, to make uh, dress up your journals a little bit. I, I really like the idea of, um, adding a little stitching. I have not set up my sewing machine yet, but I need to do that because I think it will help <clears throat> tremendously with, um, making some pockets and things for my journal. Let me go through this way. I'm always afraid I'm gonna stab myself because this is a big needle and it hurts when you do. And if you like um, the threading aspect, you can even leave your little tails of thread loose if you want, which gives another interesting effect to the um, design. But I personally, for this particular one, am just going to cut it off. Oops. Cut it off and then I'm going to take the, the glue. and put it on here. I don't know if you can hear my mom. She has this terrible cough and I told her she needs to go to the doctor, but she won't. Then I'm gonna space this over a little bit. And again, keeping that frayed edge at the top. There you can see um, a really great example of how to make your own banner. So what we would do is we would continue with this pattern for the rest of the banner. And let's see if we can do that still in some record time so that we're not um, wasting a lot of time here. I've made these a couple different times for things like um, graduation parties or weddings or something like that if someone wants a, a banner done. We, um, my daughter and I have done a couple um, things where we've, we've done these. It's funny, um, when my daughter was growing up, she didn't seem to be, um, very much into art, um, paper arts like I was, but she's very good at painting and she has painted some things that are just really beautiful and she um, also has been making some greeting cards and they look really cute too so I was really proud of her and her um, journey of picking up some of her mom's, uh, ta not, not necessarily talent, but her mom's interest and going with that. So she comes and she's like, mom, do you have this or do you have that? So, and I do, I have so much stuff and a lot of it is still in storage. Things that I think that I really need to get out of storage, like, um, like my, my big shot, because I really want to be able to, um, emboss some things. 
So I have that, I have my big shot in there and I'm sure I have a lot more fabric and trim. And I made my husband when we moved, bring my whole craft closet, whether he liked it or not. But the room I'm in now used to be my father's room and he, when he, <clears throat> I think originally it was my oldest brother's room. And then when he passed away and um, my dad, because he would work shift work, he would often sleep up here on the second floor. And... Um, So that's what this room is. And my mom has been using it for storage forever. So we, we just kind of transformed the corner of it. Now these would be, um, these would be super cute too with, um, What was I going to say? Um, some fabric on them. I just think um, sometimes when it comes to collaging, and um, it, especially if you want to conserve any of the um, background paper that you've chosen to use, that less is more, you'll end up... Um, really creating a large, um, <clears throat> I mean, if you get too much on there, it just gets too busy and it looks, it looks, uh, you lose the original design that you picked out. I mean, you went through the, um, we went through the book to see what um, paper we liked and then if we end up covering it all up with um, book pages or um, gesso or whatever we're using at the time it it's like it defeats the purpose you know so But this is fun. I enjoy it. Um, when I'm working, when I'm making things on a smaller scale, I enjoy that a lot because um, I just seem to work better in miniature for some reason. Does that make any sense? Like I used to do um, in cheese and um, ATCs quite often. And they were more my element because I could, um, what's going on with this piece right here? Because there are smaller spaces to work through. But art groups are so fun where you get to um, trade ATCs or trade um, art. And I've been really wanting to do that, but haven't had the opportunity to get anyone to work with me on that yet. But that's okay. In time, we will figure all these things out. So I'm just going to trim this one up. And what I'm going to do... Um, for the essence of time, I am going to um, I'm going to go ahead and glue these down, but I'm not going to sew the button on yet. I'm going to put this right here. Make sure that edge's a little wonky. And 
let me do my stamping. I think the stamping really adds a nice little effect. And then you can say, I made a little mixed media piece. Isn't that great? I just love the way you can just take these stamps. Tim Holtz stamps are so nice. You can just take them and with your finger, you can control how much you actually want on there and where you want it. Put some down here on the tail. And then, uh, I just think that looks so nice and so mixed media-y. Okay, so I need a small square button for here. So let me take a little bit of glue and put that on. You can um, definitely use your buttons without putting any thread in them. I just like the effect of the, the thread, but in the essence of time, we're just going to do it this way for now. So I want to show you um, how the banner looks once we get it all done. I am loving this glue, but I do have my fan on. I don't know if you can hear it because I don't want to smell all that acetone. Okay, and this one, we'll make sure we have it on the right side. I'm going to just put some glue here. I think that'll be easier than trying to... That way I can just lay this down right in the middle. Maybe it needs to go over a tiny bit like that. Okay. And then this last one, we need another tiny square bead. I'm calling them beads, but they're actually buttons. And then we will put this on here. I wanted to tell you guys, I got this crazy comment um, on one of my um, videos recently. Um, a lot of the crafters and even non-crafters um, are in, so in love with Timu and I'm definitely one of them and I love Timu and I love getting um, things from them and I, I wanted to tell you that um, my camera mount that I use to take my videos, it's a Logitech so it should be a good one. I got it from um, Amazon but um i know it the ring light went out on it so i worked on it and i tried to get the ring light working again and it didn't work and i was getting frustrated so i contacted amazon it was the most difficult time to get anyone from Amazon to understand what had happened and why I wanted just a credit to my Amazon account to buy another one. And I tell you, it was so crazy um, with their customer service. So, you know, Timu may be from China or whatever people want to say that, you know, we're supporting the Chinese or whatever. But when it comes to Timu's customer service, I've never had an issue. 
They are pleasant. They understand what I'm saying. They're helpful. It's just so much better than any other company that I have dealt with. And I was really surprised by that comment um, because, first of all, if you don't want to, um, if you don't care for Timu, don't watch the Timu hauls, right? Don't watch the Timu videos if if you're so against the Timu um, company. But again, like I said, I've never had any issues with Timu and I love them and I'm still going to buy from them. Um, and I'm not sure where that person's... Um, thought process was coming from, but, you know, the United States and the environment we live in, we're involved with people from all over the world. And I think it's wonderful. I have no problem with it. And if it allows me to get my, um, paper supplies less expensive than what I would have to pay locally and they give you the free shipping, then I'm going to use them. So I don't know how you guys feel about that, but if you haven't jumped in and bought anything from Timu yet, I do encourage you to do so. So here we go, guys. We have our little banner done. I'm just going to go back later and add um, some uh, purple thread to these, but isn't that just the cutest little thing to add to your, um, journal page or journal cover? Now, if you, if your, if your journal's not that big, you know, you can certainly, um, have it go up like this a little bit, or you could, um, you could snip it in half and put, um, one, three pieces on one side and two on another. So you could do all kinds of things with it. I just think personally, this is a really cute idea and, um, you know, do what I, did. I just got out a bunch of things that I thought I would use and see if they matched. And I just really like how this design came out. I'm okay with the fact that we didn't get very many of the pink roses. I think the green is beautiful. So, um, as you can see here, we used fabric, we used buttons, thread, um, craft paper, um, book paper, some stamping, some inking around the edges, and this is just a cute little mixed media piece. So I am excited to do a couple more of these and see how they turn out, but I wanted to share them with you. And um, I know it's a little longer video, but some of these processes can be a little bit longer and tedious. But I enjoyed so much spending time with you today. And um, I hope you try out this little project and let me know how it works for you and your journaling. And as always, I love you guys. Please stay safe. Love it if you subscribe to my channel. And as always, art on. Bye.